One of my favorite plays I've seen in the past few weeks, and maybe even all season, was this one. It's just such a, such a fun play, really a tremendously executed play. And here's how it's going to work for the Pittsburgh Steelers. First, what's going to happen for Cleveland is they're going to have Kareem Hunt sort of fake as though he's going to be blocking on the right side of the screen. But then it's actually just going to be a quick pitch to him when he's going to run sort of towards the middle of the screen. So that's what they're doing. It's something they do fairly often, but that's actually not the key thing I want you to take a look at here. Instead, what I'm going to want you to take a look at is first look at the Steeler who's going to be cutting into the left guard. Watch how he's going to sort of fake as though he's going in, but then he's going to drop back in the coverage as this will not be a five-man rush. It's only a four-man rush. But because of that fake, if you notice the left guard there, 75, he totally goes out to make sure that he's blocking him. And at that point, he's kind of been taken out of the play. So even though that, that Steeler did not rush the passer, they basically just got rid of a Cleveland offensive lineman, and now Cleveland just has four offensive linemen instead of five. So that's nothing too, too fancy. I mean, that's something you'll see relatively frequently, but what is really key is also look what's going on with the right guard right over there. The matchup is Watt Teller for the Browns going up against Vince Williams, and if you look at what Williams is doing, he's kind of faking as though he's doing the same thing that the other player did on the other side of the field. He's faking as though he's going in, and then he's going to drop back in the coverage. That's what it appears as though he's doing. However, this is kind of a double fake. Watch what's going to happen right when that happens. Teller thinks that Vince Williams isn't going to be rushing the passer, so he goes to find somebody else to hit. But the second he does that, Williams is easily able to run in and make a quick tackle for Kareem Hunt for a loss of yards. Just a, just a tremendously executed play, and a good play concept too. Of You're going to have guys drop back in the coverage, so maybe do sort of a double move. Pretend like you're dropping back in the coverage, but then still rush the passer, it is a little bit of a risky play, because if it doesn't work out, then you just wasted time for no reason, but clearly it was well worth the risk, as Williams was able to pull it off and pick up a big play. Honestly, despite the fact that Pittsburgh only won by 7, I think that there was a very small chance that the Cleveland Browns were going to win that football game once they showed up on Sunday, just because they were outcoached so severely. I don't think I've ever seen a team get outcoached as badly as Mike Tomlin outcoached Freddie Kitchens. That might be a little bit hyperbolic. There's probably some better examples I could think of, but this was definitely a clear example of just getting outcoached more than anything. Like on this play, what's going to happen is that it's going to be a play action, and then what's going to happen is that first Baker Mayfield's read will be Odell Beckham Jr. on the slant route, which makes some sense. Pittsburgh players move in, you hit him on the slant, and if that's not open, he will have another receiver that he can try to hit right over there. So that's the way this play is going to work. Pretty simple. And so once the ball is snapped, Baker Mayfield looks over to Beckham, but look at how quickly that defensive player crashes in to make sure that Beckham can't get open. He totally saw from the setup, because Cleveland runs this type of play a lot, that he knew what the route was, and he knew it was going to be a slant route. So at this point, I mean, Baker could try to make that throw, but even if it does get complete, it's only going for a couple of yards. Now, in fairness, he also has another receiver over there who is about to finish his route, so maybe he can get more open, but now for Mayfield, he's going to have to get off his first read, get onto his second read, and then try to make a throw, and that's just more difficult for Baker Mayfield. So while he does try to do that, there was a small window, but he just missed the throw. Part of it was just, you know, a bad throw, but at the same time, it kind of put Baker Mayfield in a tough situation because he had to move quickly to get to that second read and try to get the timing right. And he kind of moved just a little bit too quickly and screwed it up, but that's what happens when you're going up against a young quarterback. They're going to move too quickly sometimes and screw things up, so put them in a position where they have to do that. It was a good play by b really both of the defensive backs there because they realized what was going on, but there's no way that they just happened to realize what was going on. This was absolutely talked about at a certain point during the week. They were shown the film of this and said, hey, this is something they do. When they do something like this, make sure you crash in don't allow him to get those easy yards, and that's what they did. If you are Cleveland, maybe you could have said, hey, after this point, you should have had one of your receivers, like Odell, come back to you and say, hey, they crashed in on a slant route, so let's do this play again, but then, you know, actually fake as though I'm running a slant, but instead just run deep, I could get over somebody, potentially get a ton of yards on a play. That's something that maybe you could do, but clearly Cleveland doesn't have the type of communication going on that Pittsburgh does. And Pittsburgh knows it, which is why they were able to be so effective against Cleveland. Like, this one's another perfect example of just Cleveland clearly was not going to win this play because Pittsburgh knew what play Cleveland was going to run. They knew it going in, 100%. It's a second down and 10, and so for Pittsburgh, they're playing man coverage. It's a cover one play. And for the Browns, they're having their three receivers on the bottom half of the screen all run those routes right there. And also, just to set the stage, they're now down 7 points with 7 minutes and 11 seconds left in the game, Cleveland is. So, 
for Pittsburgh, this is a huge stop to get. If you give up the touchdown, it's a tie game and anything can happen. But one thing to notice is right after this ball is snapped, look at how soft those players are playing off of their assigned men. And they're actually even going to have a switch here where two defensive players are going to switch their assignment because two Cleveland Browns move over two different spots in the field. But they pull that off really well. And also just the fact that they're playing so far deep to me clearly shows that they had an idea of what this play was going to be. I mean, if a Cleveland Brown runs an out route here, it's an easy first down, but they know that an out route isn't coming because Cleveland doesn't really do that kind of thing. They have a lot of guys run deep, they know what's going on, and they're willing to take their chances that there could actually just be something crazy because more often than not, Cleveland is kind of just going to run the same eight or nine plays over and over again. Baker ends up just trying to take a check down, and that doesn't even work, so that just kind of shows the coaching on this team and just the way that they're all playing as a cohesive unit everybody is on board everybody knows their assignment and they do their assignment very well their defense has honestly in my opinion been the most fun defense to watch they get very creative they're a very unique team i think that uh, they're a very fun team sometimes when a defense is great they're not that fun to watch because it just means three and outs over and over again but they're fun with how they play their defense i i enjoy watching them play i really do that being said, there is several sides to football. You know, there's three sides. Offense, defense, and special teams, obviously. So, while I will not be getting too much into special teams on this video, I should also talk about the offense. Because, obviously, their defense is great, but their offense has to pull their weight. And one thing that I think their offense does very well is the fact that, while they run the ball a lot and have a lot of screen passes, they will take the occasional deep shot. They choose their moments very well. And all they really have to do is convert on a couple of those deep shots, and they can win football games. Like on this one, it's going to be just, once again, this is now, Cleveland is now running the cover one man concept. It's a cover one blitz. But what's really unique here is that for Pittsburgh, they're going to have three receivers run those three outs right there. So they're going for it here. For one thing, I think they have an idea of what the kind of coverage that Cleveland is going to be in. It did kind of seem like they just guessed right on a lot of these plays. And there's probably a reason for that. You know, Mike Tomlin, he's a great chess player. He's definitely out playing chess against Freddie Kitchens, no doubt about it. But this route concept is perfect against a cover one blitz. Just looking at it on paper, you can probably see why. Because one receiver is going to be in the middle, which is going to kind of keep the safety towards the middle of the field. And then if two receivers running deep towards the sideline, honestly, either one of those receivers could potentially get open. And after the ball is snapped, the one thing you will notice is that, yep, they are both somewhat open. It's obviously not like a wide open situation, but, you know... It, there, it definitely is a window where Duck can try to make the throw. And also, if you look at the line and look at Duck, he has all day to really make this throw because when there is so many quick passes and you really are expecting a run, sometimes when you have a deep pass, it allows you to have more time to make a throw deep. You gave yourself extra protection with only sending three receivers downfield, although there is a fourth who's also running a route, but you have an extra blocker in, and Cleveland just isn't really ready for this, so that just gives you a huge advantage. Duck makes a throw. He actually doesn't really make a perfect throw. It was a tremendous catch, but either way, that situation was set up by a good play call, even if it ended up taking a great catch for it to actually work out. Partially, that was just because Duck kind of missed the throw. And listen, that's kind of all the Pittsburgh Steelers offense has to do, is just convert on a couple of those, you know, run the ball, run some screen passes, try to get some points that way, and then just, you know, have a couple of drives where you get a deep pass or two. And that's all you really have to do. Teams don't really fear Duck throwing deep, so... You get them to make sure that they don't fear you, and then you just convert on it a couple of times, and that's all you have to do. Clearly, this is a team with a plan and a team with an identity. They know what they are, they know where their strengths are and where their weaknesses are, and they don't try to do too much on the offensive side of the ball, which then allows them to do a lot on the defensive side of the ball because they don't put themselves in bad situations, especially with Delvin Hodges as opposed to Mason Rudolph, who... With all due respect to Mason Rudolph, he made some poor decisions. So far, the Duck hasn't really made those poor decisions. And one more play that'll really just solidify my point is this one, where it's going to be a cover one play. It's, once again, cover one blitz. But what's really key here is watch that Cleveland Brown who has jumped off sides. So, okay, a player jumped off sides. It's a free play. We all kind of get how that works. The idea now should be that as many receivers that realize what's going on should just run deep and then Duck should just throw it up, hopefully one of them makes the catch. Pretty simple, you know, something we all kind of get the idea behind. But what I find very fascinating is, look at after the ball is snapped, notice how every single receiver realized that someone jumped offside and changed the route to a deep route. I mean, 
There's no way that this was just what the play was designed for. Definitely not. On a third down and nine, you're not going to just have all three of your receivers just run deep routes. They know it's a free play, so they've changed what they're doing literally in a split second so that way something else can happen. And Hodges also realizes what's going on. He just takes a shot and it works out. I mean, that's the kind of thing of just understanding your situation. It's situational football and it was played perfectly by Pittsburgh. I mean, every single guy knew their assignment instantly in a split second. And you just don't see that kind of thing with other teams. You especially don't see it with Cleveland. They're a mess, let's be honest. And you don't see it with a lot of these other teams. But Mike Tomlin and these Pittsburgh Steelers are a cohesive unit. And what he has done with this team is nothing short of spectacular. And I do think that if Pittsburgh ends up getting that sixth seed, I mean, they're quite frankly a team I wouldn't want to ha have to go against. I mean, I know that their offense isn't really that scary, but their defense is, and they know what they are. So to me, that is frightening. But you know, that's just my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, I do think that just breaking down Steelers film is always fun. They're one of the most interesting teams in the NFL and one of the best coach teams in the NFL. But that's just my opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.